This week in 207X, we're gonna move past the beginnings of the genus Homo and actually move back in time to look at the early stage of evolution within our genus. And we're not gonna start off by moving back in geological time to an earlier stage in the evolution of Homo, but rather move back in historical time. It turns out one of our earliest views of fossil Homo evolution comes from the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century, from a somewhat peculiar man named Eugene Dubois, a Dutch anatomist, who traveled actually to Southeast Asia specifically in search of the missing link. Dubois was convinced actually that humans evolved not out of African apes, but out of those apes in Southeast Asia, gibbons and orangs, and that the place to look would be Southeast Asia. Now, it was also the case that as a Dutch citizen and Dutch colonial holdings being in Southeast Asia, he had access to Indonesia. And where he went was the island of Java. And he asked local residents basically if they knew of any fossils. And what they brought to him gave him a picture of what he thought was the missing link. Now, keep in mind that this work was all done a quarter of a century before Dart presented his idea of the missing link, Australopithecus africanus. But what was brought to Dubois and what he uncovered through subsequent excavations were materials such as these. This skull cap coming us from the Trinil River Basin on the island of Java, and remains such as this femur, also coming from that region of Java. And to him, these again gave us an image of what the missing link looked like. For him, this was a human skull, or human-like skull, but that retained several ape-like characteristics, most notably a reduced brain size. This is a specimen, you can tell from the skull cap, that's larger than the Australopithecines we've looked at, larger than a chimpanzee, for example, but still smaller than a living human. Complementing this was the postcranial anatomy, such as this femur, which to him was clearly a human-like femur, one indicative of bipedality. So for Dubois, the model for this missing link was what he termed Pithecanthropus erectus, or ape-like human that was upright, Pithecanthropus erectus. Today we would describe these fossils, or we would identify these fossils not as Pithecanthropus erectus, but as Homo erectus. We recognize they're part of our genus and very similar to us. Now it turns out these remains that Dubois first recovered were probably over a million years old, maybe as old as a million and a half years old, but they represent some of the earliest fossils we have of the lineage Homo erectus. Homo erectus, as it turns out, is one of the longest lived human lineages we know of in the fossil record, extending back perhaps as old as 1.8 or even slightly older, uh, 1.8 million years of age, all the way up into possibly as young as 50,000 years in Southeast Asia. So Homo erectus is a very long-lived lineage and one that gives us tremendous views into the overall evolutionary processes that helped shape patterns of evolution for humans in the last two million years, beginning with small fossils like this. This week, we'll review a lot of evidence for Homo erectus, behavior, morphology, anatomy, and associated stone tools as a way of giving us a broad perspective as to the overall pattern and processes of evolution throughout the Pleistocene.